Hi, been out for the bike ride with the boys, the old boys, along the River Wandle, which is a river that uh, travels through a bit of Mitcham Common. And I've painted the Seven Islands on Mitcham Common many times. I'm not sure if I've done or tried to do a line and wash with the black acrylic paint. So here's, here's a painting I probably did with YouTube a year, two years ago. Uh, can you see that? I'll bring it a bit closer. I think this is a photograph I took from my little Nokia phone. It's not as good as if I'd taken it from this tablet. But I'm going to, to do some sort of scene. My, my, uh, my paintings of Mitcham Island and the Wandle do tend to be idealised versions how I'd like it to be rather than what it is actually. Although all the paintings of Mitcham Common are based on Mitcham Common, but I've done my own thing with it. Now, um, I think the first thing, because it's a bit full, once you put the marks on the paper, in, in, it's totally impossible to get rid of them. So I think what I want to do is just do it in pencil, just a horizon. Let's come across there, try to, Get it horizontal, more or less, that, that'll do. Okay, now what I'm going to do is uh, a version of that and using a, a little bit of black acrylic paint, which I've been using for some time now, as you know, if you've been watching. And I've just put out a little bit on this old plastic lid here. And uh, I'm going to use some riggers and maybe a, a, a one or two sh worn out short brushes, short hairs. Uh, I bought a couple of riggers last week in, in and around Canterbury. Uh, here they are. Uh, that's a synthetic one. I think they're both synthetic. This is a Cotman uh, Windsor & Newton and this is a Baylor Rowney. This is 100% synthetic. This is probably synthetic as well. But this one is, it's probably got some sable in it. It's nice and soft. This one's more stiffer. I haven't used either of them yet. So what I'm going to do is, is, is to do a background very similar to what I did yesterday on the Norfolk broad type of picture. No buildings in this one. You can't see them from low down around these islands. It's a, it's a small lake or a very large pond with seven small islands on and I've known it since I was a, since I was a boy, uh, grow, having grown up not far from it and lived in my first house when I got married in Mitcham. So here we go, let's uh, wet the, I'll put a bit of water on the, on the palette here and I'll do a bit of, bit of light acrylic work here. So we just do a, do the horizon. You have to work fairly quick because this paint will dry very quick as well. So and soak into the paper. So we just do the the shapes of the of the, of the trees. And I can strengthen them up, but I don't want them too strong because this is the background. So we'll just do this sort of thing. And I can detail into that in a minute. I'll just get the banks fairly straight and a bit stiffer than that. That might be a bit of silence that I'm sort of concentrating. Put the reflection in. I will wash over this in the colour later. But let's just get the the guts of this in. The, the fainter ink would stand for the trees behind. So what you put above, put below. Don't mix your water up. Don't use your watercolour water for cleaning your brushes with this. Otherwise you'll find your paint's gone opaque. This is just the background. It's all very uh, on the edge. 
don't know if you've had a chance to look at uh, Michael Richardson on Google. He's a member of the Wapping Art Group, Impressionist painter. And the Wapping Art Group is a very prestigious art group that paint plein air along the Thames estuary. And I spent a bit of time last week on the Thames estuary in Canterbury and places such as Whitstable and Margate, which are at the mouth of the estuary in Kent. Gorgeous Kent countryside. Oast houses. Now, oast houses are, are like drying sheds for hops. This is uh, some wonderful beers made mm, with the Whitstable Brewery, Shepherd Name. Wonderful. That's got a bit heavy there. But it's a bit hit and miss. Okay, so that. That'll do so far, so I'll just bring the reflections down so we can make that quite dark there. Oh, we're waiting for a very showery day today. It's, well, I had one shower, but it's sweating all over the country. It's quite cool for this time of year. Okay, so that, that'll do. So we'll put in some larger... Oh, I'll use a different brush. Remember, keep your brushes very, very clean, because if you don't, the acrylic will harden and you've lost your brush. Um, I, I'll, use, I'll use this. Now, this is a short hair brush. Just a bit of dry brush here. So I want to put some... some trees that are sticking up now in front of that. And they would be on an island maybe. So we'll put the island in and we'll put one in there. Well, we can justify that now. We've that sort of bit of a mistake there. Right, I've got to put in some. A trunk there, a two, a trunk or two. So let's put him in. Which is all new to me. Uh, I've just discovered painting really like this with the black paint rather than the ink. So we can just bring those down a bit there. Using the, the heel of the brush. You can paint very, very finely like this. And bit of cloth handy to take off the excess. I'll let that dry and then we'll have a much larger tree coming down here. By the time I put the, tr the twigs and branches on that will look quite good. So 
so that that will be further down. That will be coming across here. I do find this very very exciting. I'm going to stay with this type of painting for a while. Because it, I find very, very well on the edge. You never know quite where it's going to end up. Right, let's do some trunks now. Let's see where we go. Oops, put in the wrong water. I've also got a cup of tea here, so I'm going to clink that too. The danger, of course, is, is that you, you do too much. It's a case of a little goes a long way, and a bit more, and a bit more, and a bit more. And the artist that did a lot of, a lot of great ink drawings, I don't know if he used acrylic, was Ted Wesson, I remember, he, he, dead sadly, but he was a member of the Wapping Art Group too. And look at his stuff on Google or the gallery or anybody that's flogging his work in the gallery. Because he's such a wonderful, wonderful painter. Impressionist, I think he was self-taught. Michael Richardson isn't, Michael Richardson did go have a couple of years at art college. I didn't have any formal training. I just had a desire to do, to do it like you really, I started a bit late and, and fell in love with, with art. And now I spend all my time doing it. Okay, so that's that. Now let's change our brush a little bit and do a bit more of this background here. Put some, we always come over very dark. Test that. I tend to keep the tops of the trees flat rather than bit naff, pointed, and uh, make a little bit of a heavy one. Try and get nice shapes to your trees, but don't be symmetrical, you can help it. It's hard to, to, to remember that. Oh, the wind's really... Looking out the window here, windows. this background down there. I can add little bits of that as I go along. Oh, we need just a little bit heavier on the shapes here. No ivy on this. All right, we'll do more banking. Oh, just, just the beaches coming out. Showing the sort of shape of the the ground around here. I mean, really, if, if you pull these off, they're, they're good enough to frame without any paint. But I like the skies, so I tend to use just two or three colours for these. I don't really take too much away from the drawing. As if the drawing is the uh, is the work, the, the paint is just filling in. Right now we're going to have a beach coming across here. So I'll show you what I've done. That's what I'm working from, and that's what I'm doing or trying to do. Alright, that's a bigger bit of a clump of trees. But but if I do a clump there. It's going to balance, it's going to unbalance that, it's going to look too similar. So I'll find something else to do there. 
Maybe another one of those. The, the thing is, don't, don't make slavish copies of anything. Do your own interpretation, your own thing. Make a piece of art out of it. Okay, that, that's all right. So this way I'm using all of the brush. Right. Oh, the rain's coming down now. I'm very fortunate. I've got this this loft conversion with three lovely large Velux windows, but it's got very very dingy. I hope it doesn't detract from the painting. I don't want to put the light on. It's very very cold and for so late in May. Sounds like a bit of hail coming down. We got home just in time. We've had one sh heavy shower. We just we just got home in time. I well, had my waterproofs with me. But at our age, we think we should, we should be tucked up with a blanket around our knees by fire. Oh, this is all a pebbly, shingly shore. So the heavy stuff coming in here. Quite a bit of work to work to do on that yet. A lot of that be covered with uh, with um, <coughs> a bit of grass. And now we want to do th a bigger tree here coming up from here off the picture so we'll sort of spring trees really as it is but but oh the beginning of spring I don't want to, to put in too much foliage on the side as you know I, I do love winter trees. Alright now let's get some a good trunk here. They're coming off the base there. So that make that one put that into perspective. Why do two and three is better? Now, I've got to make one of these bigger than the other. Otherwise, I've just repeated myself. This is what I try to get away from. So I would just make that one much more distinct. Let the brush go where it will. Try to make it look random. I'm tempted to go down to one tree. Why not? So 
make it a bit stunted, like an old hawthorn. Mm, I didn't anticipate doing this, but, but this is it. When you're working uh, on improvising, you, you just make it up as you go along. And, and if you make a bit of a, a hash, it doesn't matter. You can change it into something, something else. Without correcting, so so it's warts, warts and all. The best way to describe it. We have some some of this coming up. Probably a bit heavy there. But the time I put a bit of green on it. <coughs> right, let's uh, do some of this now. We'll put in some, some grasses. So a bit of reflection. those reflections in there. So it all looks a bit wet, doesn't it? Right, now we'll just do a bit of detail in some of these trees in the background. Now I'll give it a dry, and I'll go over with watercolour. It's a little bit stunted, but we did go a bit wrong with putting the two similar, so we've had to cut them out. Our loss is there. Put a bit of uh, stronger stuff in here. Ooh, thunder. Sorry Freddie hasn't been up to say hello, he's, he's resting from his exertions, he's growing, he's fully grown now and he's turned into an absolutely glorious thing for it. This is a lot of pleasure. Okay, put a signature on it. Okay, we've got a picture there. So I'm going to give it a dry, have a swig of tea. Let's clean my brushes, get them all nice and
That's better. I, I, the brush I used yesterday, I, I deleted the video because it was getting more unlikes and likes. I mean, I must admit, it wasn't the greatest picture. But that is a bit spoiling. That spoils it a bit. Right, take your headphones off. That is just a bit, bit heavy there, but uh, I think considering the hit and miss of all the sink work, it's uh, not surprising. But I've got a palette here, which I, uh, it's just the burnt sienna, black and um, some lemon yellow, or some cadmium yellow. It says we've got some blue on there and, and sienna, but it's sopping wet like that. Uh, I hadn't seen any moisture for a while, so I just sprayed it with a bit of uh, a bit of clean water. So I've got nice wet paint to work with. Right, okay, I hope you can hear me on my brush. Right, I'll wet the paper all over. I want to keep a bit of light in the middle of this if I can remember to do it. Okay, that's all I've got. You don't need to stretch your paper, it's Fabriano, uh, 130 pounds. As Stephen Cronin says, it's, uh, it's, he buys it because it's cheap and it is, but it's very good for what we're using it for. Cotsman watercolours, 21 mil tubes. You can choose your own colour. I give you a guide, but you don't have to stick to what I do. You can make your own palette. But what I would say is learn to use and, and mix the colours that you've got rather than try to, to find the perfect colour. You won't. You have to learn to mix your paints. You only need half a dozen for any painting. But, but what colours you use are entirely up to you. But stay with them and, and do everything they can learn everything about all the mixes by trial and error. Right, so we're going to put a bit of a nice Siona sky. And just keep a good bit light in the middle. And what you put in the sky, put in the, uh, in the water. Oh, it stopped. Okay, now we're mixing a bit of bit of bit of the black with that. Black and burnt sienna, a good mix. I learned that from Roland Hilda. My good juicy paint though. Sort of reflects the, the day we were having. When your paper expands, just just reclip it. Okay. Right, let's uh, just stretch it nice and flat. There we go. Right, now while that's drying off, I'll put a bit of a background, just Payne's grey, oh Payne's grey, just black, so a bit of black, to show a bit of distance. Okay, right. Just want to dry that off. Let's take your headphones off again. My 
swig of tea. Now the green. So we'll mix a bit of black with the lemon yellow or the cadmium yellow. That'll give us our green. You need your cloth to take off excess moisture. So let's just shake that over there. I'm going to do a bit of, bit of green in there. Not sure if this is better than lemon yellow, but I've got it, so I'll use it. Let's just drag that down there. Yeah, we've got a good green on the top here. Bit of sienna now and the black in the foreground. And just to give it the warm colours. When the hake, well this one is plays up a bit, but when it splits, just drag it in a bit of moisture, just Bring it back together again, but you can see it's going in clumps. It's a pain in my life, this price, but it hasn't lost many hairs yet. If I just there like that. Right, apart from that, which I'm not happy with. Clean my brush. Bit of rigor work. Let's try the new rigor. Let's try this one here. Uh, a couple of birds. Bring some glasses. Right, I'm not much more I can do with that. Pitch about that tree, but, but hey, I'm not the expert in this. But you, you need to practice. It does get easier with, with time, but don't be discouraged when you can't do it. I mean, I get enough, just make enough mistakes. No, I'll just put that close to. So it's a bit about that, about that. It's probably more careless, but uh, uh, someone will unlike it. Right, let's show you what I've done to what is on the the original, you might think the watercolour is, well it probably is, but so that's what I've done with it. That is totally different to this one. I should have just done the one like that. Uh, but anyway, Mitchum Common, memory of from a bike ride at some stage. I hope you enjoyed that. I certainly enjoyed doing it. Thanks for watching. Let's just zoom, I'll just zoom you in. Let's bring you around a bit. So any, any questions, just ask. Right, let's go right in. So let's go into this. Now it's not too bad, but that is just too heavy. It should have been dry brushed, but it didn't quite come, out, come off as you saw. So there's our background. There's our other tree. That's how it should have come out. Let's just go back across again. Let's see the islands. So there's sort of a couple of islands, there's one island here, one one here. But I've made them look a lot more distant than they actually are. But that's the artist's prerogative, isn't it? We make art rather than slavish copies. So there we go. Thanks for watching. See you soon. Bye bye.